Hey guys, and welcome back to Book Review Friday. So today's book is something else. Wow, it is, it's crazy. So I'm sure you've seen the title, but it is Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke. So this is the last Keelan Patrick Burke book that I am reviewing currently. This is the last one I uh, own. So this is the last one I am gonna do for right now, but hopefully in the future I will get more of his books and read more because I really really like him as an author but I do want to give a disclaimer this uh, book is very graphic very gore heavy um very centered on cannibalism and there is some you know like rape and stuff like that so if you do not like gore or graphic books or books that deal with cannibalism or books that deal with like rape in any kind um it's not too graphic the rape but I mean it's mentioned so I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer this book is very graphic and like as someone who loves horror and has been watching and reading horror for as long as I can remember this book startles you a little bit um the cannibalism scenes are very graphic and I was eating at one point and I had to stop because I knew I wasn't eating humans but uh it kind of makes you feel like you are when you're eating at the same time they're talking about eating so I had to stop that real quick but um yeah so <laughs> just a disclaimer if those things turn you off this book is not for you. I have other books that I have reviewed on my channel that you can check out. This one's probably not your cup of tea, but. So this is Kin, and I really love the cover. So it is a soft matte touch cover again, like he always does, which I love so much. And it has like the blood splatters and the creepy house and then the girl standing there and then the back is like doused in blood looking splatters she's even like bloody looking and the house is bloody like the sky is bloody like it's all just blood so very cool cool um design I really really like it but um yeah so I would say that this book is very Texas Texas very Texas Chainsaw like if you've seen those movies and you like them um I would say this one's way more graphic than watching a Texas Chainsaw in my opinion um but I am a big fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a movie so it's one of my f one of my favorite franchises so I like anything that's kind of like that and this book is definitely um kind of got the same vibe so let's read the back and then I'll give you a little synopsis and then tell you like my thoughts and stuff. So, on a scorching hot summer day in Elkwood, Alabama, Claire Lambert staggers naked, wounded, and half blind away from the scene of an atrocity. She is the sole survivor of a nightmare that claimed her friends and even as she prays for rescue, the killers, a family of cannibalistic lunatics are closing in. A soldier suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder returns from Iraq to the news that his brother is among the murdered in Elkwood. In snowbound Detroit, a waitress trapped in an abusive relationship gets an unexpected visit that will lead to bloodshed and send her back on the road to a past she has spent years trying to outrun. And Claire, the only survivor of the Elkwood Massacre, haunted by her dead friend's dreams of vengeance, a dream which will be realized as grief and rage turn good people into cold-blooded murderers and force alliances among strangers. It's time to return to Elkwood. So... The book starts out with Claire. Again, she is bloodied. She is naked. Um, she has fingers missing, toes missing. She's, they popped out her eye. Um, so she's missing an eye. I mean, she has been stabbed, wounded, raped multiple times. And I mean, she's half dead. I don't even know how she lived. It's insane. But um, she's outside running away, obviously. She got away and she's trying to find a way out find help I mean whatever she can find and a truck comes along with a dad whose name is Jack and his son named Pete and they see her and they stop to help her and they take her to this doctor that is in town like he lives at his house but he sees patients in house like he's like really old I think he's like 70s or 80s he's a pretty old doctor I mean that's 
what I would assume he was that old. So it sounds like that because he was like pretty weak and stuff. And they take her to him and he like tries to help her a little bit. And Jack and the doctor talk and you know, he's like, who did this to this girl? And they're like, you know, don't want to talk about it because it's iffy. And um, it kind of flips from chapter to chapter. You read perspective from Claire or um, Jack and Pete or the doctor to the son, Luke, who is part of the cannibalistic family. And he is the one that lost, well, he didn't really lose the girl, but his brother got murdered by her because um, he was alone with her and that's how she got away. She murdered him. And he was the one that was supposed to hunt her and get her back to the house and he didn't. He lost her and he saw the man and his son pick her up and save her. So he has to report back to the family and tell him, you know, like, great, I lost the kill. Like, she's the only survivor left because she was with, um, two guys, her boyfriend, her best friend, and her best friend's, like, boyfriend, I'm pretty sure. So there was four of them, and she was the only one that survived. So again, very Texas chainsaw -y, like, the couples and, like, the group, but again. And so, you know, he, Luke, the cannibal son, I guess, I don't know what to call him. I think he's the eldest of the kids, but he um, has to report back to his family. And this family's crazy. I mean, they think that God has given them this sign that they are to kill all sinners and then like eat them, you know? I, I don't know, it's really weird. They're very like praying to God and all this stuff and it's just kind of like, oh yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah, mm. makes sense, makes sense. But, um, so the family goes on a hunt and they know that Jack is the one that helped her because the son recognized the car and told his dad and his dad knows who he was because, um, Jack had, Jack knows this family is doing this. He tries to keep out of it, but he's noticed that people go missing and it's always this family in the center of it. And he didn't want to help Claire at first. He didn't want to help her because he didn't want to get involved in this business and, you know, get on their bad side. But he did it because the son was very like, we have to help this girl. So they helped her. And Jack tells his son, you know, these people are bad. They're going to come after us. So he tells his son to go pick up Claire from the doctors and take her straight to the hospital to where... People will help her and she will be in the public eye and they can't get her. So Pete leaves to go rescue Claire and Jack kills himself because he doesn't want the family to get to him first. He'd rather go out on his own. So he kills himself and the family gets there and obviously they're very mad because he, one, the girl isn't there and, um, you know, he can't tell them anything because he's dead now. So then they realize that she's probably at the doctor's house. And when they get there, um, Pete and Claire have already left. They're in the truck driving. They're gone. And the doctor holds them off as long as he can. And he, you know, he dies. It's really sad. He, he tried to hold them off as long as he could, but he, he, you know, he ended up dying. He was, he was an older man. They were ki there. I mean, I think the youngest kid in the family is like 12 and then the dad is you know, there and stuff like that. But so he just had no, I mean, it was just not a chance that he was going to live. And so, um, you know, Luke, the son that originally lost her, I think he's starting to realize that his family isn't good. Like what they're doing isn't right. Like his family's telling him that, that he's right, that this is the right thing to do. They should murder these people and then eat them. Like, this is right. And I think he knows deep down that it's not, but he doesn't know how to, like, he doesn't know how to stop it because it's all he's known, you know? So anyways, the girl um, and Pete, Claire and Pete, make it to the hospital, and she had been in a coma for, like, nine weeks. I think she, like, finally just woke up. And the police are like, you know, we found the guy who did it and it's fine. And she's like, guy, there wasn't a guy who did it. And they were like, no, the doctor, 
it's him. We found all the, like, the bodies and your friends and stuff. And she's like, no, the doctor wasn't the one that hurt me. And no one wants to listen to her that it was, like, a family. It wasn't this doctor. So she ends up going back home. And she knows that something's wrong. You know, like, obviously the family got away. And she wants revenge. She wants to seek revenge. And... Her boyfriend's name was Danny, and he's one of the ones that died, and his brother is an Iraqi war veteran. He just came back, and he has some pretty severe PTSD, and he believes Claire. He he knows that it wasn't that doctor. He knows that it was a family, and he finds out their name. He knows about them. Like, he's done digging with his um, another veteran friend that he has, and he believes her, and he wants revenge for his brother that got murdered. He believes that it was wrongly, you know, it was wrongly done and no one wants to believe anyone else that it wasn't this doctor. So he and his friend, um, Bo, Bo and Finch, the Iraqi veterans, Finch is the brother to Danny and Bo is his friend who is also like, um, the one researching everything for him. So they, um, they get the idea that they're going to go seek revenge and, that's when everything happens. Um, uh, Pete ends up going to find this woman named Louise, who was actually his second mom, is what he calls her. Um, she dated his dad. I don't. They were never married, but she. He just called her his like second mama, and so he goes and finds her, and you know tells her like, "Hey, I'm gonna go seek revenge. Like, I, I want to find out what happened to my dad. Like, blah blah blah." And she um, is in an abusive relationship at the moment. This guy is not great. And, um, you know, she tries to help Pete. And um, some things happen with her and the abusive uh, husband. Or is he a husband or is he just a boyfriend? It just it says relationship. So she's just stuck with this abusive guy. And she ends up helping Pete and sends him on his way to go find Claire. So him and Claire head to Alabama at the same time that Finch and Bo are heading to Alabama. Finch won't let Claire come on their revenge trip because she's been through enough and he doesn't think that she can handle it. And they're veterans. They know how to use like military operated weapons and such. So they go at a different time and Claire and Pete end up going too. And that's when it all comes to a head. I mean, that's the family and they all kind of go at it together and there's like a big fight. I mean, actually the fight was not as bad as I was expecting. I was kind of worried that the fight was gonna be like this like bloodbath, but it actually wasn't too, too bad. Um, so the ending is pretty good actually. I was pretty happy with the ending. Um, I either expected it to go one way, all four, Finch, Bo, uh, Claire, and Pete were gonna end up dying because they were gonna seek revenge and the cannibal family was gonna get them, or they would kill the whole family and everyone would live. And it was in somewhere in the middle, so I'm not gonna tell you exactly what happens because I want you to be surprised if you go and read the book. But, um, yeah, uh, there, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, people die, which is sad. Um... Not as many people as I was expecting. So there's that. And I, I liked the ending. The ending was a little abrupt for me. I was expecting more of a, like, kind of like an epilogue, I guess. Not really an epilogue, but just kind of like a, maybe a few weeks later kind of thing, you know? But it was just kind of like it, it ended. And, like, you felt like it was resolved, but not all the way, I guess. Um, you got answers, and there was a clear ending, but it wasn't a full clear ending. Do you know what I mean? Does that make any sense? I don't know how to explain it. Like, um, it ended good. I just, it ended good. I was just expecting it to have a more clear defined ending, I guess. And it was just more of like a ending. You know what I mean? Um, I still think it was a great ending, but this book is insane. From the first moment I read it to the end, I was just kind of like, <sighs> whoa okay so uh that's how it's gonna be then isn't it i mean again i just want to reiterate very graphic very gruesome very cannibalistic centered um you know i it was good though like if you if you're not 
too weak stomached or you don't mind graphic violence like that um you know it's good not even graphic violence the violence wasn't even that bad it was more just the graphic like descriptions of eating people and like that kind of thing that was a uh, wow but um honestly this book was really really good um if you've seen my brother by ania alborn book review um i also said that was kind of uh, texas chainsaw you to me and um i would I would definitely say if you like the Texas Chainsaw vibe, the Ania Alborn book is much less descriptive and gory than this one. But if you want the gore and the descriptive and the very centered cannibalism, um, this one is good. But I would put them in like almost the same category. They're very good. They're very, very good. Both very good books. Um, again, Brother is semi-graphic because... It's a horror with cannibalism in it, but definitely nowhere near um, kin. So if you do like the cannibalism aspect, cannibalism aspect, but you don't want as graphic and gruesome, I would go with Brother by Ania Alborn. But if you want to try both, I think they're both really excellent, excellent books. So yeah, um, I really, really, really liked this book. I'm glad this was the last Keelan Patrick Burke um, book I read because this was just such a finale for me to read um it's just like a ooh, like a a good one to go out swinging on but um I'm excited to read more of his books uh, I currently do not own any though so if you have any um suggestions please leave them in the comments down below um they don't have to be Keelan Patrick Burke they can be any I mean honestly any genre I just focus on horror because it's my favorite book genre but I'm open to any kind of genres so yeah uh I hope you guys enjoyed this book review. Um, let me know if you have read this book. And if you did, what did you think of it? I'll be thankful about it. What did you think of it? And um, yeah, like, subscribe, you know the drill. Um, and I will see you guys on Monday for my next video or Friday if you're coming back for another book review. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.